Hello you, it's me. Today we're going to talk about The Memory Police by Yoko Ogawa, a Japanese author who's won every major literature award in Japan. This book was a finalist for the 2020 Booker Prize and the 2020 World Fantasy Award. It seems like it was received pretty well internationally. We follow a main character, an unnamed novelist who lives on an unnamed island, and occasionally things will vanish. People wake up with the realisation that something has gone. Walking around their house, they'll find items that they previously recognised but now have no memory of, no emotional connection to, no context for them. Whether it's emeralds, birds, hats, people gather in the street and burn these objects or throw them into the river or the sea. Unquestioningly, they forget these objects, get rid of them, and then forget they ever forgot them. Some people, however, are doomed to remember everything. Memories linger for them even though the objects, the things, the ideas are gone. These people are hunted down, taken away in trucks by the memory police. Uniformed, soldier-esque enforcers who tear down people's homes searching for these illegal hidden objects that are supposed to have disappeared. One such person was the main character's mother, a sculptor who hid tiny things in little drawers in her studio. Another, her friend, just referred to as R, who she hides from the memory police in a room under her floor. At the same time this is happening, we're given fragments of a novel the main character is writing about a girl who communicates through a typewriter that breaks and she's left completely mute. This book is not a book that's going to make you happy if you go into it looking for a world build or for anything to be explained to you at all. You get to the end of the book and all you have are the answers you've come up with. The book doesn't hold your hand. If there's a message, it's like, you find it. It's a straightforward A to B story, I guess. There's not a lot to actually unpack aside from meaning, um, so I'm just going to talk about my general thoughts about the book. I think what this book is mainly about, metaphorically, is about liberties being taken from you by people, and people going along with it out of fear. These liberties being taken until a line is crossed and you finally realise you're unable to fight back, no matter how much you want to. The book could also be about totalitarianism, about subservience to a state, about the ripple effects of a regime trying to erase everything that came before them, everything that represents a time when they didn't exist. It could be about remembering and holding on to the past in the face of repression by the state. We're never given a motive for the memory police or the disappearances, which could represent not being allowed to know the inner workings of your government. Is it about how you live in the face of the fact that everything will eventually vanish? Could this be a novel about living with mental illness like dementia, knowing that who you are as a person is going to vanish and disappear? What are we besides the sum of our experiences and memories? And after that's gone, what's left? I've read a couple of reviews that have that suggests this might be a Holocaust novel. I know that the author does cite Anne Frank's diary as a big influence, but I feel like there's got to be more to this book than that. It asks the question, is it better to remember something when it's gone and have that pain that you'll never see it again, or to forget it entirely along with the pain, the trauma of the loss? It's never really explained how or why the memories are disappearing. There's a passage where it describes roses disappearing overnight and the wind blows all the roses off the trees, off the shrubs, and leaves all the other flowers untouched, which made it feel much less like a sci-fi than a fairy tale in a foggy, grim, modern setting. It got less believable and realistic as the novel went on, talking close to the end about disembodied voices floating through cracks in the floor. In the novel the main character is writing, where the woman realises her voice has been stolen from her uh, instead of her willingly giving it up. It feels like maybe the main character is trying to assign a cause to create a villain for a problem that's happening in real life that doesn't have an explanation, trying to assign blame to cope. There appears to be a trend in a few Japanese novels I've read where it seems like the authors are like reluctant to name things, people, places, settings. I'm not sure why this is. Maybe it's to make the subjects and themes of the book feel more universal, so any reader can slip into the main character's shoes and situation. Or maybe it's because they put a lot more emphasis on story and the events than the characters they're actually happening to. But there's also this refusal to world build in this book, to the extent where the only real way the consequences of disappearing items and ideas are described as having an effect is on the relationship between two people. This really wasn't for me. Um, I'm a person who goes into books wanting to ask loads of questions to get loads of answers. I love a rich, well-thought-out world, character development, these fantastic internal monologues, and I don't really feel like I got that from this. 
It was a beautifully written book. Uh, it had a lot of moving passages, a lot of poetically written lines. Uh, but overall, it left me a little bit disappointed. So I'm going to give this three stars. Maybe I just read it too close to having read another weird Japanese book and it lost some of its shine because of that. Uh, but thanks for tuning in for this review. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. Don't forget to follow me on Goodreads. Don't forget to join our Interstellar Book Club, which is down below. And I'll see you soon for the next one. Bye.